Hello everyone and welcome back. We got one more week here as I'm filming this until I will be up north for deer hunting and I always make jerky every year before deer hunting. When I make jerky this time I have three roasts that are venison and when I go up deer hunting I always like to make a couple roasts that are beef even though that's expensive to buy. Uh, I mean the venison jerky is awesome but the beef is super good so I always like to get some of that so whoever's up there gets a little bit of beef. But I was driving to the store and it was like, crap, uh, these things are wearing out. I've had these for a couple years now. This is the only one I have left. I had two. Used to be able to buy them right at the store off the shelf. And I was thinking, I, you can't do that anymore. You cannot find these unless you buy them online. So it was. I thought to myself, what am I going to do? So I went to the thrift store, which is very close to where I was going anyway. And I bought a couple of these. I don't know. I suppose this is something you would indoor grill with and people probably buy them and they use it one time and the whole kitchen fills up with smoke and they say I'm not going to use it anymore so I got this one for $2.99 and this one here was $3.99 and I'm going to put this in right now plug it in close the door and see if I can get up to that 100 degrees I brought all the grates in here to get washed up I have my three venison roasts right here thawing out and then here I've got two beef roasts. I was just out in the workshop and I ran a couple of the cherry boards through the planer or the, actually the joiner and got some chunks and then I used my chainsaw. I used, like to use mainly maple. You guys have seen that in other videos that I've done on jerky so I made a bunch of that also. For right now I'm just going to put a little cherry in here. I just want to make sure that that element gets hot enough to make smoke. I don't know if you can see this but at least it gets red hot. When you buy those uh, whatever they are, those electric fry pan things that I had there, when they're brand new they get red hot like that and then as they get older they don't anymore and you have a hard time keeping the heat. Let's see, somewhere in here I have a new digital one. It's only been about two minutes and this is on the top of the smoker. I'm getting worried now that that heating element will be too big. I have no way to adjust that. We really don't want this to go over 120. I can always use the smaller one if I have to. I'm glad that I thought about this though. I mean the other things cost you about $15, $20 plus shipping. Well unless you got Prime. And uh, these things were so cheap. I should have bought a whole bunch of them. Uh, it's still going up but We'll see what happens here. If you had a big enough element down there, this would be a nice hot smoker then. I really never thought about doing this before. It just happened to be a need today. It's already smoking out the side. Oh, it's 152. That's just too warm for what I'm doing. I'm going to have to probably crack this door open a little bit. I'll let that sit for a little bit and see what happens. I seem to be able to adjust it by opening and closing the door like one or two inches so I'll play with it tomorrow. It's getting dark right now but uh, I need to get that meat all cut up but at least I know I can do it if I have to. Like I said I'll use that smaller element. Now for the worst part about doing jerky, cutting up all the meat. I'm going to set up right here so I can sit in my chair and watch a deer hunting video. <laughs> I think I watched this maybe once or twice two years ago. nice because this is all partially frozen which is perfect. Eight days till deer hunting opens, and never know what might come by your stand.
these deer roasts are a couple of years old now so I got a little freezer burn on the outside and uh, that's a good thing to use them for jerky you can just cut that right off Well, I got the three venison roasts done. Now it's time to do the beef. This is like a, uh, what was this? Uh, rump roast. There's going to be some fat in it. I'm going to have to cut this fat off. But I don't mind, um, I don't know, I don't mind if there's a little bit of marbly fat in here. It doesn't uh, last long enough where I have to worry about any kind of spoilage. And in fact, some of this stuff. I have had in jars even when it has some fat in it like this for two years and it's still good but you just can't beat beef. Okay, so we're finally down to the last roast here. I always cut this off and then I throw all this fat with the chunks of meat attached to it into the fry pan and I cook it. The beef, not the venison. Okay, I got all the meat cut up now and now it's time to start getting out the bowls and making the brine and getting them in there. Now that I have everything cut up, I took out my glass bowls. You can use glass bowls, you can use stainless steel. I don't think I would use Tupperware though. I think that the smell of the jerky and everything that you're doing would just stick right in there. Uh, and then I just pulled out my recipe thing. <laughs> I have been using this recipe for about 32 years and that's the same card that I've used every time. I've already shared this recipe. It was my secret recipe for years and years. I already shared this on uh, Jones Act Survival. So if anybody wants to know how to make this, there is a video on it. You just have to do a, I suppose, just go into the jerky playlist and it would be there. So, and the kids do like this the best. We were just up north last weekend with the kids and I have a bunch of jerky there and they can even tell the difference between if I smoke it with maple, which is what I always smoke with, or I have some up there that was done in apple and they could tell and Emily said she likes the maple better. All the ingredients are in, now it's time to mix it up. When Sarah was like two and three years old, or even older than that, but when she was real little I would make this and I would have to pick her up and sit her onto the counter and she'd love to sit there and mix this up with the little plastic thing like this here.
Okay everyone, well the grates are clean, everything is in the fridge, tomorrow morning it goes in the smoker. Good morning everyone, it's time to get the meat on the racks and get them out in the smoker. I just spent 45 minutes. I'm, I don't have enough rack space and this happens, I don't know, once in a while I just make too big of a batch. So I just took the last 45 minutes cutting this rack, this piece down and putting uh, some slats inside of the smoker so I could add one more rack on top because I don't feel like freezing this and then doing it later. I'm going to try out the smaller element, see how this one works to start with. And then I added those two slats right there so I can add the one more rack. Okay, we're all filled up. So we're just about 44 degrees. That's that's a good temperature for doing jerky. Anything up to, I don't like to get much above 50 degrees, but uh, this isn't bad. Well, it's still rising. It's uh, 80.4 right now. It's just starting to smoke, but it takes a long time for the meat and everything to heat up in there. I'm gonna take off and go to the rifle range. I bought a new rifle for deer hunting that I need to get sighted in, and we'll check it when I come back. All right, well, I just got back from the shooting range, and that was actually amazing. I've never shot at a shooting range before, and they really helped me out a lot. So now I'm going to bring another gun back over there, one that I can't seem to get sighted in very good. I switched around the racks here now. This, uh, this one seems to hold it at around 120. That's not too bad. So anyway, we got a lot more hours to go. I just switched out the, the sawdust stuff there, the chips, so it'll start smoking here shortly. Try to get one more shot of this. It's getting dark out, so it's hard to see right now, but I did flip it all once. It's well on its way. All right, well, it's about 11 o'clock at night almost, and I'm gonna start pulling some of this stuff off. Sarah was just over here and grabbed a piece and said it was good. We need to get some of this into Ziploc bags. I have this much done right now that needs to go into an airtight bag. Uh, there's still another rack of venison and uh, none of the beef is done yet. That always takes longer because of all the fat in it. Okay, so late last night I pulled this out. Um, it's always important that you put it into an airtight container for overnight or for a day or so because some of it's going to be brittle, some of it isn't. And by putting it into an airtight container it kind of evens itself out so they're all the same. Uh, I shut the smoker down last night then and then this morning I went out there and I plugged it back in. And we're not running any more smoke on it. You only run smoke when you're doing the jerky for maybe the first, I don't know, four hours at tops. As soon as it glazes over, all the smoke is doing is collecting on the outside. So let's go out and check it. Uh, it's been plugged in now for a, a couple hours, so we'll go see how it looks. Well, we're running about 104 degrees. I do have the door cracked open about an inch. Most of this is the beef. And then we've got some venison down here. 
when you get these thicker pieces like this, it'll take, uh, this will, I'll probably leave it in here all day long and then we'll get it all off this afternoon or early evening. Well, it's time to pull off most of that beef. I think almost all of it is done now. I pulled off some of the venison earlier. There's only three pieces that were still a little squishy, but they should be probably. Yeah, they're pretty good now. All of it is done except for those three pieces of beef right there. When I posted pictures on the Joe and Zach Survival Facebook page, people were asking for the brine recipe. And I know I showed this earlier, but in case you can't read it, it's a half a cup of soy sauce, half a cup of Worcestershire sauce, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of MSG, monosodium glutamate, which um, accent is what I buy here that is. Now I've made this without that and it still turns out good. Two teaspoons of onion powder and one teaspoon of liquid smoke. So that's all you need. You see how I cut it up. I have done this before where I double the brine mixture and put it in there. For some reason, I don't know why, it just doesn't seem right. That's why I do, you saw how I do it. I put each one in its own separate container and I never double it. Okay everyone, well thanks a lot for watching. This was supposed to just be a video showing that I'm making jerky for deer hunting and it ended up being a video on how to make jerky. <laughs> anyway, now you guys know how I do it. I know I've posted videos on it before, but I'll see you guys on the next video. Deer hunting is less than a week away.